Good afternoon, my friends. On behalf of Badminton Pan America Confederation, we welcome you to our sixth session of our Coach Corner program. I hope you are well, staying safe, and staying positive. My name is Mario Carrera, and I'm pleased to moderate today's session. Before introducing the topic of today's and our speaker, let me quickly run through our family rules. To our Spanish Spanish speaking community, por favor encuentren la opción de traducción simultánea en la parte baja de sus pantallas. Está indicado como interpretación. Parece un pequeño mapa mundi. If you have questions or comments at any point, please write them down using the chat function located on the right side of your screens. Questions will be answered at the end. Today we have the pleasure of having one of the most emblematic coaches of badminton, Professor Jennifer Lee from Canada, who will guide us through today's topic, physical and tactical training at home and on court for badminton players. But first, let me speak a little bit about our special guest. Jennifer Lee is a professional badminton coach with over 25 years of coaching experience. She is known for her coaching finite badminton skills and on course strategies. Jennifer has a very sharp eye on picking up new skills and strategies in world elite players. Born and raised in Hong Kong, Jennifer was a team member of the Hong Kong junior badminton team and the Hong Kong badminton team before she moved to Canada, where she created the legend of badminton training and raised the level of badminton awareness and popularity of the game in North America. Also, Jennifer has successfully trained players to compete in super series tournaments, international tournaments, won gold medal in Commonwealth Games and Pan Am Games. Well, she devotes her time in these elite, elite players. She also spends time develop, developing up and coming athletes who compete in the national tournaments. Jennifer also has the passion in finding the right gear for players so that they can perform in their best. She knows badminton products so well that whether they are her players or her club members, they love to hear her comments and suitability of racket, shoes, shuttles, anything you can think of. Jennifer has coached Canadian national team at many different international tournaments, including 2019 Sudirnan Cup, 2019 Pan Am Games, winning four gold, three silver, and one bronze medal, Pan Am Male and Female Team Cup 2020, male and female gold medals, and has coached Michelli at Rio Olympics in 2016. Jennifer has also acquired the Advanced Coaching Diploma in 2016 and won Coach of the Year in Toronto, entering the Toronto Wall of Fame in 2015. Jennifer is dedicated and passionate leader with the vision of building a team in bringing badminton coaching to a world-class level. Focused and energetic, she always finds ideas and, metho and methods in improving coaching. Without further, Jennifer, it is our honor to have you here. The floor is yours. Please, we kindly ask you to share your screen. Okay. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, Jennifer. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Jennifer Lee and I'm from Canada. Um, very happy that uh, Sherman, uh, Herman invited me to present these uh, coaches conference uh, coach uh, presentations. Uh, today, my topic is physical and tactical training at home on court for badminton player. Okay, we'll go to... Uh, Jennifer. Yes. Would you could you um, press on your keyboard the keyboard the F5 okay. key so you can share the whole screen so we can? Yep. Excellent. 
Okay. Um, whether whether uh, we're training uh, home or on court, okay, the important thing is your focus level must be the same. Usually when you train at home, you might be a little bit more relaxed. So they try to stay focused and train like you are on court. Because you are training at home, you might have limited space to move around. There's a few things that you need to know before you start training at home. Uh, you need to wear a court shoes for training. Don't try like wear a slipper or not even like wear any shoes at home. Uh, if you do not have a space uh, wide enough, you need to cover up, uh, see around, and then you see you can cover up all the shop uh, corner. Uh, that might be, uh, you might be getting uh, injured easily if you're not covering up all the corner or any objects around you, try to move it around. And also try to use your racket cover to cover up your racket. Uh, this will protect your frame and also increase the weight of your racket for uh, skill practice. Or you can use a heavier racket for training purpose. Uh, set up a net at home if possible. Try to use a use net or an indoor net or pole set will do. Okay, you can see when we um. Uh, let's see. Talk about. I have. Oh, sorry. I'll go back first. Okay, make sure that we are safety. Okay, I, uh, let's first talk about the uh, skill with footwork and I create a seven exercise. I decided the seven uh, uh, physical exercise that you can train at home. In the past nine weeks, uh, the Canada shut down. I have like so many students are following my home exercise program. It works really well. And the first one we're talking about is a skill with footwork. The important things that, you know, here, footwork and skill, you have to do matching together. You can, when you practice at home, you cannot just like standing at the net and keep on practicing the net. So each time when you do front and back footwork, uh, sorry, front and back net spin, make sure you do the net spin and make sure you bounce back one step. If you have a space enough, like bigger enough, then you can try to use two steps. And same thing at the uh, forehand, backhand, cross court net. You also have to lunch, uh, lunch forward one step and bounce back one step using the same footwork that you're doing when you're doing front and back net spin. When you're doing an upper hand clear, the third one, you can try the sit up positions or you can sit on, sit on a chair because you don't have a high ceiling at home. Uh, so that either you have a set of position, uh, positions that you can see on the bottom of the picture uh, or you can sit it on the chair and you keep on doing the swinging and maybe one side, one, you have, if you have someone to toss a bird to you and then make sure you talk, one person toss and the next person, you, uh, the worker will try to swing and hit the bird over. You can try 30 times in a row if possible. You can break it into three to five sets if you practice like this. Um, the fourth one, we are doing front and uh, back clear net. Front and back clear net, you need someone to standing at the back and then you sit on the chairs, you're tossing up the bird and then once the worker hit the bird and then you run up to the net, pretending you're doing a net spin at the net and then you bounce back and you use the back work, foot, foot work back to the baseline. If you have a ceiling high, you can, you can just not using the chair, but if you don't have a ceiling, a high ceiling at home, you might as well just sit down on the chair and repeat during the swing. With the person toss up, you swing, and then you hit, and then you run up to the net. You can try repeating like 15 times um, in a row, and then you can try three to five sets for this exercise. The fun and back clear net, uh, we, we finish it, okay, this one and the next one. We doing the, no matter you are front or back corner catching bird exercise, is like you're helping you to improve your upper body turning speed, flexibility and your lower body footwork, start, uh, footwork starting. This exercise is like, this exercise is like more like pretending you work on home. You look at the first picture, you can see the, it's a catching bird exercise. You can see that I'm, I'm standing in between the orange and red uh, pylon plates. And then you're pretending the front, the red, 
pylon plates and the yellow one, you're going up to, to the front. So the tossing person, you need someone to help you, either your mom or your parents, or I mean your father or your sister or anybody. Then you're holding a pile of bird and you're standing there. And then you can do underhand toss, you can do upper hand toss. Each time when you toss a bird, you just, you're just starting to catch the bird and then throw it on the other side. Possible you can put the two bucket of uh, uh, two empty bucket in front of you. Each time when you catch the bird, you just throw it back to the bucket. It's easier for pick up one. And then second thing is easier for you are very like similar to when you're catching the bird when you when you actually play on court. Okay, then on the second uh, the second top picture on the right, that one, we're using the cover to um, it's, a, it's a bottom two, it's front four corner underhand return shots with the cover. And same thing, you can see me. I was standing a little bit, uh, I'm standing in between the blue plates and the yellow plates, and I'm standing in the middle. So the sideway is for defending the smash, the back two is for upper hand stroke. So this exercise is also working on your upper body flexibility and and uh, you know your your upper movement, and then make sure that you react a little bit more faster when you when you work on. Even though you're at home training or on court, it works really well for this exercise. Okay, we'll go for the next. Uh, multiple station exercise, uh, station footwork. Okay, there's a 10 exercise. Each exercise you do 10 to 12 seconds. And each time when you switch to the next exercise, you keep bouncing or skipping. This means that you do not stop in between those exercises. These 10 exercises cover uh, footwork, agility, coordination, strengthening. You can do three or five times in a week. Uh, higher level, like international level, players should do this daily and make the time longer into one minute per exercise. I have included the, you the link for you to see how this can be done. Visit the site and keep exercising. And on the right hand side, you can see I put this um, exercise on YouTube. You can click on this link and, and check with it. Number three, uh, skipping. The, the, the skipping is helping you to strengthening your wrist and ankle and also your coordination. You can see a lot of countries, uh, they do skipping all the time. Then you can look at how, how many times that we should uh, give the players to skip. You can look at uh, most of the time that we will, the major we will do is a double skip. Double skip that you can do one minute time 10 set. And then the national level, you do 100 to 140 times uh, in a minute. I'm talking about like provincial, you do 100 to 120. So I laid it out all the, all the different level that you are coaching or the level that you are right now. And this is a number that you should uh, uh, as I set it as a benchmark that you, you keep one minute and see how many you can skip. So I put the school team uh, number on the, on the slide is because I, I might be helping some of the school teacher that you are helping some of the school team player. And this is a number, number that you should uh, work on them. Single skipping for three minutes is really like, uh, is this a single skipping? Either you both feet jumping up or you alternate your feet. And this is for three minutes nonstop. And you can try three minutes, uh, sorry, you can try three set at the beginning and then you can add the number if they're getting better and better. Right leg skipping, one minute, left leg skipping. And that means that you keep on using one. Make sure that one minute is nonstop using one leg. No, don't let the players uh, switch to another leg. Okay, because we have to build up the leg uh, strength on each leg though. Uh, footwork, uh, we do upper hand six corner footwork uh, using one step uh, starting footwork because usually when you're, when you're working at home, you might don't have as big a space. So I, I, I create these exercises like you're only using by one step. We're only working on starting. So the six corner are front two corner, right and left side two defense and, and, and baseline two corners. So totally will be six. Two at the front, right and left two side, defense, baseline two corners. Okay, because we don't have a, a full court at home, 
So we can do one upper hand, six corner, one step footwork and no racket. You just use your racket, you just use your racket hand each time when you're doing it, you pretend this is a stroke. Then each time when you go up to the net, you're pretending you're hitting the shot. And then when you're going back, you make sure you jump and switch leg. And each time you jump and switch leg, make sure you swing your arm, pretending you're holding a racket. Okay, this is a upper hand six corner. And then we also do underhand six corner one step footwork. Uh, these are different. We're working on lower body. You have to use your racket hand to touch the floor each time when you lunge down. This is very important. I see a lot of players that they are not touching the ground. If you're not touching uh, the ground, that means that you're not lunging deep enough. Um, so after you lunge out each corner, you have to bounce back to the center. This is very important. A lot of players, when you practice, uh, you only care about your starting. You only care about how fast that you start to the front. To, to, to get the shot, but you remember how fast you recover to the center is also very important because the faster you recover back to the center, the faster you get ready to return all the shots. And this is a very, uh, very important that you have to remember every time when you train with this exercise, especially this touch the floor exercise. Six corner. Front and back footwork, okay, you go home, you're at home or anywhere, you find a longer uh, stretch space at home or outside, and then you do your front and back footwork. When you go up to the net and then you use your hands to pretend that you do a net spin. And then when you're going back at your last step, you have to jump and switch leg. And you can see on the, on the slides, and then I write it down all the numbers that you should uh, you know, try to monitor yourself or, or your players, that this is a number that I create. Okay, the number always can play with it. You know, when they're getting once, they're getting better. Make example, upper hand, six corner, one step, I put national team for 30 times. If they're getting better, you can add 35 or you can add six sets. So you just keep on increasing the number when they're getting better. And uh, so that they will, you will see themselves, so, like you can see the kids, like the players are improving, like gradually. Okay, this is the number four footwork that I will work on. Okay, number five, uh, the racket swinging. Oh, sorry. This is. Oh, okay. Number five, uh, racket swinging. When you when you do your racket swinging, you can see on my picture here. You can find a chair sitting on it. Uh, same thing, the same concept. We we're still talking about we don't have a high ceiling. And then you can easily will have like sitting on the on the chair. If you do, or you're swinging outside, is fine. I can see some of the um, Pan American country. You might be pretty hot outside, pretty good weather. You can just like walking outside, doing uh, this exercise at your backyard. So you raise up your arm straight and flicking your wrist. These exercises are helping you to increase your wrist strength. When your wrist is has strength, then when you keep on flicking and swinging. Okay, then you will generate more power and speed. You, when you add the cover, you don't have to be using like uh, any fancy cover. You can use like one third of this cover can, can also help you. You can, you can also like add the rubber band to make the racket head heavier. Or you, if you have a heavier racket at home, you also can use a heavier racket to do the racket swinging. Okay, with the more power, your stroke can be smaller, but still can generate power with a very small distance. So if you keep on practicing this, then your wrist will continue getting more power, more speed. So the next step, when you once you establish this strength, you can start learning deceptive skills. I start using this cover since like 2013, training with Michelle Lee at uh, Macau Open. And uh, we have a very good result on that year. Uh, we get second at that tournament. And after that, and in 2018, I start using the heavier rubber band that will increase 30 gram on her racket head. So I will work on so many like uh, backcourt, like attacking skill uh, for using these rubber. And, and she's performing really well at the 2018, the final in China Guangzhou. And I think in badminton, our field, we don't have a lot of like support equipment. Let's say this kind of cover, the rubber band, the heavier racket. Uh, maybe barely you can see some of the uh, six or six uh, six uh, lighting to help you to start your footwork. You know when the light spots up and then you go touch the light. You know we are very seldom to find so many equipment to help badminton to improve like so many 
um, other things, but this is the only a few things that cover and the rubber band, the heavier racket, I will think of to improving your skill. So you can keep, you can try it and see how, how, how it works on your player. I, I find it all really effective though. The underhand swinging, as you see on the picture, uh, the underhand swinging is the same concept with the upper hand, and this is the underhand stroke during defense. Defense is not, they will try to not doing a big swing. This cover is helping you to limit your swing. And I find it out is really useful for, especially on stroke and skills. And each time when you swing, uh, the one key thing is your forearm need to stop in the center. Try nodding the players I keep on doing, like swing like this, you know, like then you, if they're doing this, then that means that they are, their form, forearm is not strong and not stable. So when you go back on the court and then you really play with it, there won't be a similar uh, effect, uh, same, same feeling on it. So make sure that we, we swing one time, we swing the forearm, and then we stop in the center. We stop backhand and stop in the center. And that's how you train properly on these kind of drills. Okay, and number six exercise that I will work on lower body leg exercise with the, uh, without weight or with weight is fine. It really depending uh, how old you are and what kind of player that you're training with. So, and the first picture that you can see, I basically, if you're not seeing it, I'm holding a purple color uh, dumbbell. Those dumbbell total on the right is five pounds, left is uh, five pounds, so total is 10 pounds. So when you're doing this exercise, you squat with the dumbbell, as you all know, Badminton is a very fast paced uh, sport. There will be a lot of turning, changing direction, changing speed as well. Uh, so you need to build up your lower body strength. Uh, this exercise will build your squat strength. With a good squat strength, you can build your stability and starting movement with, will be faster. Then you can uh, execute your shot more consistently. And you think about it, your lower body if your, low, if your lower body is shaking, no strain, not steady, then how you can aim the shuttle accurately, right? Is if your lower body is like keep on shaking and then you, you keep, you, because you're not strong enough, then you kind of, every time when you hit the bird, you won't be accurate to return the shot with the quality. Uh, fun one leg squat, and you can see a lot of YouTube or a lot of um, Good player, uh, India or like Denmark, like you can see PV Sindhu or uh, Victor Atkinson's. They always post these kind of pictures on their YouTube, and then this is the most common exercise that we will do um, for for the for build up your lower body strength. Okay, we have a lot of lunging movement on court. Okay, like lunging to the net, lunging to the back. Lunging is not only uh, on the last movement, let's say you're not the last movement, you lunge to the net and then you will stop. There's a lot of lunging in the first, uh, first lunge movement uh, as well. Therefore, it is important to train the strength on both legs. Okay, don't train just one on one. Let's say we, when you're right-handed, we always focus the training on the right because you're only thinking that the right, right leg is, a, is your main foot. But you don't you forget that if you don't train your left leg, then what happened to you? When you playing singles or when you playing doubles, when you're on court, you're limping because your right leg is stronger than the left, right? But if your right leg and left leg are the same strength, then that means that you have both legs run even faster than you're only running, uh, working on right leg. This is, this is also my experience too. Okay, one leg squat on the stool. Okay, you also same thing, you have to work on both legs too, not just one. Always remind yourself, even though sometimes oh, I feel lazy, I just only want to work on one leg and I don't want to try to do left. But remember, every time you think about it, if you train your left leg at the same time, you'll be three times faster. If you think about this, then you'll push yourself to do the training on your left. Okay, this is also to build up your thigh muscle. We lunge forward to the net, backward jump smash. We need a lot of strength on both of our thigh and glute muscle. So we need to train one leg at a time and then minimize it, the movement on court. This is also help us with one leg balancing. So you can see if you go, it looks like it, I'm, you can look and see my picture, it looks like it, it is pretty easy, but you really work on it. You can see it's kind of, if you're using one leg, it's kind of really balanced, uh, couldn't really balance. And also the challenging things that if you are, you can do this and make sure that your left leg not 
landing on the on the floor. So you are in the air doing the squat. That's the difficult part. Okay, but if your right leg or left leg is not strong enough, you always can just like put your leg on the on the ground one step and you go on it. See, this is also you can work on. Let's say if you're working, if you live in a house, there's a lot of stairs. You also can work, uh, you know, at the at the stairs too. And then also even though when you um, go out for tournament. Yeah, you stay in the hotel. You might have a bathtub, uh, you know, bathtub in in the in the uh, in the washroom. You might as well to just like use a one to step on it. And this is a very good uh, exercise that you can do it uh, like nobody seeing you, but it will build up your thigh muscle uh, and the glute muscle really fast. This is for lower body. Okay, number seven, uh, wrist and arm exercise with dumbbell. And I start with a very easy exercise to, to start. Let's say you can, on the picture, uh, I'm, I'm doing, uh, I'm always setting all the numbers on it. So on the slide, sorry. Then you can always see that, you know, whenever, whenever we're doing weights, you always look for the age. Uh, don't go for the, uh, don't go for the level. You, you look at under 11, you're doing like 30 seconds like this, and you're under 13, you're doing like this, because you, the, the, once that you're building up the weight, uh, we have to be careful for, for the little one. Okay, that's why I start using the dumbbell on, on the little one. Uh, the wrist up, upward and downward exercise, okay, there's a lot of exercise to strengthen your arm. These two exercises are strengthening your wrist. Uh, as you know, we rely a lot of, on our wrist flicking movement to build on the momentum to hit the shuttle. This exercise will do that. Okay, make sure you put the dumbbell on top of your knee and show on the picture for support and so that your wrist will not cover, uh, look, so that your wrist will not overbend and get injured. And also when you work on these exercises too, maybe like when you're doing it, it's like still uh, so boring and stuff like that but you make sure each time when you're doing it, you have to focus on it. You can't be just like too relaxed when you do keep doing this exercise. Okay, hold straight. Okay, uh, this is to build up your for, forearm strength. With the strength here, you can, you can distribute the force within a very small distance, then you have better control of your accuracy. Okay, so you look at the number, and you can try, uh, you can try like for a little one, you can try three pounds dumbbell. The older one, you can try like uh, five pounds, three pounds, five pounds, eight pounds. When you are a bigger guy for men's doubles, you can try 50 pounds. Oh, but I'm kidding. Uh, the, I think the maximum 10 pounds is already very difficult. Like you try 10 pounds, but if you're thinking easy, then you can make the time longer. Okay, so just increase the uh, difficulty. Hold on the side, this to build up your detoy. Okay, this will help building up your uh, upper hand pull up strength. So when you, when you have a stronger deltoid, then each time when you see the bird coming, then you, when you're pulling up, you'll be much lighter, much faster and very steady and get ready when you see the bird and you can easily accurate to hit the bird over um, to the other, the, to, the, to your opponent. Push up. Uh, you're holding the dumbbell, which is very easy. You just like keep on pushing, just, just like pushing up the, the weight. And then you will feel tired on the, both the detour and the, the whole arm will feel much tired. Okay, this might be a little bit, uh, this might be a lot uh, of uh, young kid, young player can do, put, like they, there might be a lot, like a lot of little kids, uh, say under 10, you might cannot do a lot of push up. Or all, all those like under 13 girls, you might cannot do like uh, a full push up. This is a very good exercise for you to build up your strength because you don't need to put like you, you don't need to like pressing down on the ground. You're actually pushing the, the weights up to the to the roof. And then you try that and then you see if you try three, five, ten pounds, you keep on increasing your strength. And this is also is a very good um, uh, exercise, a weight exercise for a little one, too. And but if you're the older guy, you can build up into like 15 pounds if you want on each hand. And also will build up your uh, arm strength too. Good. Okay, so uh, I'm finished with the seven exercise uh, that you can work on home, or even though when you go out for tournaments, you can easily working on uh, at the hotel 
or you can find it in a small area that you're comfortable with, you can always work on these seven exercises by yourself to uh, get prepared for your tournaments too. Okay. Uh, thank you, Jennifer, for this first part. Now for our audience, we have a small uh, trivia that comes straight from BWF. And uh, the trivia of today is, where is the shuttle? So you will have uh, 30 seconds, uh, more or less, and use the chat box to put your answer. You have to be analytical. Already one good answer from Colombia. I've got another one from Raul. I keep checking. Ten more seconds, and then we'll see the answer. Angela, you got it right. Okay, so. Where is the shuttle? We look there. So the answer was D, I guess. I'm sure. I think uh, there were three of our viewers do, that got it right. So, um, Jennifer, yes. Please, let's continue. It's very interesting. Okay. Second part, uh, we're talking about the tactic. Um, am I sharing? Uh, not yet. Wait, what should I do? <laughs> <laughs> have... Whoops. You got your presentation? Just uh, share your screen again. Okay. Um, can you see it? No. Oops. Not yet. Not yet. Oh, wait a minute. Maybe I'll, I'll left. So hold on. That's my computer. Sorry. Can I... <laughs> How I can get back? It's okay. If if not, I'll, I'll share it from uh, from mine. Okay. Yeah. Can you share it on your side? Yep. Okay. Oh, we do. Share screen again. So. Is it? Is it? Can you see it? Excellent. Excellent, Jennifer. Okay. Okay. We got it right. Please continue. Okay. I have to go back. Yeah, I can with my group. Oh, maybe Mario, can you help to help me for? We have your we have your your presentation on the screen, Jennifer. Oh, really? Uh, I can't see it. Okay, why don't I I just uh, go through it and then you'll help me to if, move in. If there's an issue, I'll, I'll let you know. Uh, okay. Um, <clears throat> the first one, uh, the second part that we're talking about tactical training, okay? There's a training that you can do with a partner on court. This tactical training is like practice the smoothness of your movement and the ability to offense return shuttle at the exact spot. When you're all looking at the picture on the left-hand side, the top part is the defense player and the bottom part is the offensive player. With the exception on the first one, both sides can be offense or defense. What exactly is tactic training? It's in short, okay, tactic training is to learn how to move around your opponent and struggle them making mistakes and return a good quality of shots. Okay, first one, first tactic, say clear and drop. 
As I said just now, both sides can be offense or defense. This looks like a, a very simple drill. Uh, it is including accuracy, ability, consistency, and skill, rhythm, changing speed for both hands and feet. This is a foundation skill. Uh, this, is a very found, uh, this is a foundation drills in singles. Uh, a lot of world top players just use this tactic can easily beat the opponent without, without have, having one smash. This drill is trained you on clear and drop tactic. How this used to move your opponent to, to four different corners randomly to control your opponent. Okay, that means that when you, when you see on the, on, the, on the diagram that you can see all those dots on one side, four dots on one side, the other side four dots, that's the uh, corner that you should aim on and when you do the clear and drop tactic. Okay, next, smash a net. Okay, this tactic, training, uh, this tactic training is practice whole court smash to six different spots shown on the diagram. The front two spot, the skill that you have to use is slice smash. The slice smash is like you try to smash like almost like one to two feet uh, behind the surface line. Okay, the, uh, the middle side spot is the skill that you're using is using a heavier smash or a point smash. Those are the aiming more angle, you know, in the both side. This is normal, more, normal, a lot of players that they will use like heavier smash um, on these drills. The back two spot, you can see you need to use chop smash. What's mean by chop smash? Does chop smash mean the angle won't be sharp? but you purposely smash a bit longer. So you can see, look at the, look at the picture. You can see the dot on the six different dot. You can see that if, if I keep on smashing in those six dots, okay, the triangle part is, the, um, is your opponent. Then you will try to, try to smash and move him around. And so that he will be like difficult to return the smash. Uh, these different smashing is moving your opponent around, limit their quality, return ability, turn your opponent from strong defense position into a passive position. Then you can find the right opportunity to find a rally, to finish the rally, sorry. If you're on the defense side, you are being moved by your opponent in six different spots. What you have to do is anticipate the return and return accurately back to the four different corner to break the offense tactic. Next, smash and drop. On the offense side, you smash on two spots on the middle side and drop to the front corners. Then you look for the return quality of the shots. If the return quality is not good, meaning the defense cannot return the shuttle back to one of the four corners, you continue to attack and give pressure to your opponent. This go on until the opponent make mistake or not able to return the shots. On the defensive side, the defense should try to get the shuttle back to the four different corner to stop and disturb the attack of, opponent, of the opponent. For both offense and defense side, you need to have a variety of shots. This means that you need to straight cross. You can do, sorry, this is you need to do straight cross, sometimes do twice. Sometimes you drop twice, sometimes not dropping and just keep smashing. All this is reduce the opponent in predicting your shots. Last one, smash and push. The offensive side, you smash and push. This is sorry, make your... Yes? Sorry, Jennifer, can you move your presentation forward? Forward? Which one? Yeah, your, your slide. Oh, my slide? Yes. Am I doing forward? Because right now I don't, I, uh, you're on the smashing net presentation. Yes. Or oh, smash a net? Yes. It's showing smash a net. Okay. Let's see if I can show it. Can you help to move to the next slides? Um, because my, my computer is frozen. You you will just uh, uh that's the problem. you will have to um, stop sharing and i will share the 
the slide. Okay. okay. Sorry. No problem. Can you do it? Yes, Jennifer. Just uh, wait a second. Okay. I'll share my screen. Technical problem. <laughs> no problem. No problem. We have two more. This is a clean drop. Smash a net, the next one. Takes a while to. Just number 10 is uh, smash a net. Can you see it? No. Yeah, this is smash a net. Smash a net, okay. So I was talking about smash and drop. Smash and drop, okay. Yes, correct. Perfect. So I repeat one more time. Um, I think it's better so they can follow with the, with the okay, image. So, okay, I, that's a slight effect, 11. I'll repeat one more time. Uh, smash and drop uh, on the offensive side, you smash on the two spot and miss side and drop to the two front corner. Then you look for the return quality of the shots. If the return quality is not good, meaning that the defensive cannot return the shuttle back to one of the four corners. Uh, then you continue attack and give pressure to your opponent. This goal goes on until the opponent make mistake or not able to return the shots. On the defensive side, the defense should try to get the shuttle back to the four different corners to stop and disturb the attack of, of, of the opponent. For both offense and defense side, you need to have variety of your shots. This means you need to do straight, cross, sometimes drop twice, twice Sometimes that you're dropping, just keep smashing. All this is to reduce opponent into protecting, uh, predicting your shots. Last one, smash and push. The offensive, the offensive side, uh, you smash and push. This make your opponent turn, reduce the uh, stability, reducing the quality of the return shots. Then you can find the opportunity to finish the rally also can limit your opponent to have the offensive mode earlier than you. The defensive side, you return with net or clear. Different folk, same thing, you return the four different corner show on the diagram. This is also to reduce your opponent ability to, contu uh, to continue to attack. Sometimes this, uh, this tactic, when both of the players that they are offensive player, then that means both sides want to, want to get the opportunity to attack the other, the other side, the opponent. Or this tactic also good work on when, when the player that you play against, that player is like extremely attacking player or like offensive player. You want to limit them to keep on like attacking you with the smash. The only thing that you can do is every time when, when you have a chance at the net, always push them to the back and so that they won't have enough time to continue to attack you. So then what is not having tactics? Okay, this is when you smash the opponent, return to the net, and then you lift, then you lift, then your opponent can get back to the attack position easily. So that means when you do the attack, okay, you are not setting up for you to continue to attack. Every time you smash and then you lift, then you go back to the defensive positions. Okay, same thing on the defensive side. You return all the shots closer to your opponent so that they can easily continue to, you know, like easily will continue to attacking or defending your shots. You're not pulling your, your opponent away. And this, this is also can easily will give them into attacking position easily and come back to counter your attacking again. So, and this is mean by not using the tactics. So, I mean, we're saying not, you're not playing smart. That means every time when you see on my diagram, here, you can see all the blue dots. It's like, this is the dot that, this is the corner that you have to pull your opponent like to the blue dot. And so that you can have a better position, no matter you're defending, you're attacking. So this is the four tactics that we usually use on singles. And unfortunately, I don't have time to go on the doubles. So this is like, you know, what I'm, I'm presenting today. And let's see if any questions like from the audience. That's the... Thank you, Jennifer. I will uh, stop sharing my screen.
So okay. we can move on the, to the question and answer. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. So uh, we already have some questions. I've been taking note. Okay. Um, how much does the wrist movement influence in the smash shot? Uh, can you repeat? I don't. I don't get it. <laughs> the wrist. The wrist. How much? Let me see if I can share. Uh, okay. They are asking us. How much does the wrist movement influence in the smash shot? Mm, like by a lot. I'll tell you, especially men's singles, men's doubles. Okay, if you want to have a powerful smash, you have to practice more on uh, record speed swinging. The faster record speed that you have, you will get power on your smash. I'll tell you three times harder. Okay, I'm um, uh, following on, on the smash. Uh, we have a question from Andres. Uh, the smash and next exercise and uh, net exercise. Yes. Or how long is the drill? And mm. you do the same time for the smash and drop exercise. Uh, you go by number. Uh, after you hit, you go up to your net, it count once. You do 15 times, then as a one set, you can do five sets per day. Okay, excellent. Um, we have another one that we're asking us. At what stage comes running? And uh, how do you mix uh, running with this exercise? You do it at the same time? You mean running outside? Uh, yes, or running in court. How do you mix both the uh, running and the drills that you do? Or, or you okay, do it like, one day? Okay, separate? I got it. Uh, running is different. R running is <laughs> different things. If you do running, is running. Like court movement is court movement. I'll tell you the experience. I have players that they follow my training program, plus they do 5K, 12K outside. But when they come back this week, they still, they still not like uh, moving smoothly on court. Then also I give you a tips when you do the running, don't like, try, try not depending, I'm not saying don't, like try not depending too much long running. You try to run on, um, let's say three minutes, then you sprint 10 to 15 seconds run three minutes, spin 10 to 15 seconds. That works really well because this is an interval running in, in badminton. It's different from that you normally like marathon running outside because that's our sport. We'll have a lot of interval during the game. Okay, excellent. Um, we have another one. Getting back into the smash and neck exercises. Um, um, do you focus more on accuracy? You focus more on technique? Uh, you need both. Okay, without technique, you cannot be accurate, smash to those six dots. Mm -hmm. okay. we have so another... two things that it has to be important too, is combining. Oops, perfect. Um, we have, they're asking you for your advice on how would you work with kids from eight to 12 years old? Mm. The, the, the seven exercise program that I showed it on screen, I, some of the uh, little kids like eight years old, uh, they are also following my program. So you just try to, I can, I can see when you show on my slides, it, I'm pointing out the number. The eight to 12 years old or eight to 10 years old, try to make the number like by little. And when the older kids, they do 30, then you're like down to 10 times then I think you easily can, can help them to improve. Okay, and uh, we have another one. Uh, do, you, do you work all these exercises in one day uh, session? Uh, I do have higher level uh, athletes. They work this program in one day. And they work for five days in a week. Okay, we have another one. Let me see, I had it on the phone. Um, um, we have this question uh, from Guatemala. Uh, they Guatemala. greet you for the presentation. It's very good. And um, how many times per week you practice this exercise, this uh, uh, strength wrist exercises uh, with the, I mean, with the different ages? A training. Uh, I don't know wrist? if I make if I make myself clear. No, um, I guess it's more going uh, according to the different ages mm -hmm. of the athletes. 
Yes. How many times per week do you work these uh, wrist strength exercises? The wrist exercises is not that hard. Like I would say, even though you do it every day to, to make yourself progress fast, we're not doing a big, like heavier weight. You know, if you do big, like let's say you, you do like the, the squat weights and those things, then you might be do three times in a week. Uh, don't overuse. But if you do those like wrist and racket swinging, you can do it every day. The more that you do, the more like the faster that you improve. It won't hurt though. We have some uh, technical issue that we cannot solve. Uh, but we were lucky that we got all the information from Jennifer. Uh, we thank her for all the advices she has to give us. Remember, we will have the, her presentation on YouTube channel. Please uh, follow with the questions. We'll try to get them answered by them. And uh, it's been a pleasure to have you here. Thank you all for your time. And we'll see you Friday with Martin. With Martin.